Hi guys, a lot of you have been asking for a boat for a lucky fish. Well, finally we got a chance to do one. Here we are in Bahamas, just anchored off Georgetown. For new viewers of Lucky Fish Channel, Lucky Fish is a Tiki 38 designed by James Warham and Hannah Kaboon. She was built in South Africa and launched in 2012. Unfortunately, Toya couldn't be with us on this trip, but she plans to join us a little later. We are heading to the Warham Hui in Florida. It's uh, on in about a week's time and uh, we've got about 400 miles to cover until we get there. We're really looking forward to it. It's going to be a chance to meet other Warham owners, have a look at their boats and share ideas. But in the meantime, let's get on with the tour of Lucky Fish. Here I am sitting on the park hall. Uh, there's a cabin, we call it Toya's Cabin. This is the kitchen. There is a desert. Okay, let's start with the kitchen. I'm sitting in the forward end of the port hull in the galley. Right here we've got a 12-volt fridge freezer, which is great. We keep ice cold, we can always have a nice beer at the end of the sail, and uh, yeah, we're big fans of refrigeration on boats. Uh, overhead there's a ventilation uh, hatch, which is uh, forward opening, magazine rack, two fixed port lights, uh, the settee I'm sitting on, uh, right underneath there's uh, fruit and vegetable storage, uh, behind me there's an un a panel we can unscrew and fold down into the space here and it becomes a double bed. So this is the bed when it's folded down. It's uh, lost a bit of its length since we moved the fridge over from the starboard hull, but we weighed up the pros and cons and decided the fridge in the galley was a real bonus. It won out in the end and uh, yeah, so the bunk got shortened a little. So there's plenty of room for, what are you suggesting? Well, <laughs> well there's plenty of room for um, one tall person on one side and uh, gee, you could get two short people on the other side. On the outside of the hull we have a uh, fold away table which drops down if someone is using the bed and it also provides when it's raised a nice wide area for storage which we've found to be really secure even in a rough passage. We've got um, some shelving underneath the fridge here, uh, there's also storage underneath that for containers and so forth and the floorboards can be raised and there's actually quite a lot of storage underneath the floorboards in the hulls. Uh, this box area here is actually reinforcing or part of the structure of the boat. Uh, the beam that supports the mainmast terminates in here resting on the inside of the top sides of the hull and this is all reinforcing. And here it's just given over to small uh, handy storage and here we've got an electrical area which brings the uh, electrics, the solar charging and so forth across into the port hull. One thing of note which is a real uh, benefit on uh, the Tiki's is this little shelf here which is great for little, little items that you use from day to day and also as a handhold when you're inside here. At the back end of this cabin is the kitchen. There's a two burner stove here and grill and an oven. The sink has two pumps. One is for seawater, one is for fresh water. We use this shallow well for everything. Washing dishes, peeling potatoes, saves lots of water. Under this counter we got cutlery drawer. And what is this? Shipboard? <laughs> Ship drawer? It's a junk. Drawer. Okay. Every kitchen's got a junk drawer. Mm -hmm. And for storage under this one. Plates and food. Food. Seasoning. Covered the sink. Just the glasses. More stuff. Condiments. Seasoning. And to the left of 
this out, there is a chest fridge, which is really handy. Between the oven and sink, there is a countertop garbage bin. And here's the ceiling light and lovely under counter light. More storage and other floorboards. And here, little one. Under the stove, there's the compressor for the chest freezer next to the stove, and also the uh, strainer for the water intake for uh, the seawater pump and the water maker. Beside the companionway, underneath the seat, there is a fire extinguisher and also a fire blanket. This is the control panel for the water maker. Over here we got a nice long window. For a nice view. Now let's go see Toya's cabin. So this is Toya's cabin, otherwise known as the forward cabin in the port hull. It's a tiny uh, double, but good for two people who know each other well. And up forward there's a, uh, a hatch, which isn't watertight, but there is a watertight uh, floor at the base of the compartment up forward. And uh, the rest of it's used for storage, just for odds and ends, life jackets, any lightweight things. We've got a spare light weather self-steering vane up there, a couple of pool noodles and very little else. But the uh, watertight compartment is right beneath that locker. Small shelf above, port lights on, the, on both sides of the hull, which make for a great view when you're sailing. The ocean rushing past and loads of storage underneath. And there's more storage here. Well, I'm sitting in the lazarette, which is at the aft end of the port hull. If I just pan around towards the stern of the boat there, you can see there's a watertight compartment. We'll take a look at what's in there in a moment. Um, rope storage and so on and if I pan around this way looking forward in the boat towards the bulkhead you can see the uh, water maker installation it's a Ecotech uh, produces I think 60 litres an hour it's quite a snug little uh, fit the reverse osmosis membrane is located it just fitted between the sides of the hull I don't know if you can see the other end there with it plumbing fittings on the end um, it all just went in perfect uh, we've had so many occasions like that on Lucky Fish where things just fit it's uh, quite serviceable I can get to all the filter casings easily pump can be serviced there and yeah, it's a great little unit I'm really happy with it right if we pan down you can see here this is the battery installation get my knee out of the way it's, there's three 105 amp hour sealed lead acid batteries um, calcium lead acid batteries they are now five years old they're deltex and they are awesome i have abused them on occasion as i say they're five years old i just had them load tested yesterday there's three in this hull and there's two more of the same battery in the starboard hull and they came up, their amps were uh, well well above the cold cranking amps of this particular model, which is uh, 625 CCA. They came in and around between 715 and 748 across all five batteries. So I'm stoked with those. You can see there's a few little glands where they go through into the galley area, carrying the power through in the various spots. And what I'm about to do, having uh, tested the batteries, I'm about to replace a cover that sits in here. It's basically a little floor for the water tank, which sits in this space in here. It's a 60 litre water tank. 
there was a 150 litre water tank in here and no water maker and it sat from here up to here and uh, I just replaced it back in South Africa with the 60 litre version and placed the water maker in the space that was left behind. I said I'd have a look in the back water type compartment in the stern of the boat. There's the stern post, the string is up on the deck and that gusset in there is something I put in. It's a reinforcing arrangement um, which is bonded to the sides of the boat, to the stringers on the side of the hull and also you know directly to the, uh, the stern post. That is a tie-in point for uh, a bridle if I need um, to tow a drogue at any stage or even put out the parachute anchor uh, that's a secure attachment point uh, which I hope is sufficient to carry the loads. It's an 18mm stainless bolt around 18 inches long. That's a reinforcing pad, a piece of what looks to be 30mm uh, hardwood uh, which is there to take the load off the aft uh, mooring cleat. And just finishing our look around the, uh, the lazarette, um, you can see plenty of rope storage, uh, water maker filters or spares, uh, a little bit of netting down there, that's actually pilchard net that we used for the uh, trampoline, there's an off cut and quite a bit of that left over. Um, again we did that in uh, South Africa, uh, we had Allman Sales do that and they did a great job. Um, of course they use super tramp material and make all the Robertson and Kane cat tramps so they knew what they were about um, but it was, I challenged them a little bit with this pilchard netting uh, but they did a, did a superb job and um, yeah I would recommend uh, almonds um, I don't have any commercial ties to them but I can tell you they are very reasonably priced and really obliging people and they make a hell of a lot of sales okay each hull's got a uh, battery isolator and uh, so when I leave the boat for an extended period of time I just turn that off um, and leave the solar panels connected and of course that keeps the batteries topped up to the max. The solar controller is a focus and I believe that model is now uh, no longer being produced. There were, well I heard from one supplier that there were issues with some of the units but I can tell you that there's uh, two on this boat and they have been good touch wood. I also carry a spare solar controller just in case there is an issue at sea. We really depend on those units and it's a pretty good idea to carry a spare. Uh, there's also a third controller on this boat which sits forward over the engine start and windlass battery. I can just pan up there, there's the hatch and the rest of the world. And I can get down and through that hatch and sit down here without a great deal of difficulty. Right, I'm standing here in the starboard hull and uh, right at the front of the boat we've got a storage bin behind that, the head, behind that, hatch over the main bunk. I'm standing in the companionway to the main cabin and at the aft end of the starboard hull there's a quarter berth which we tend to use as a dressing room, storage of clothes, light items and so on. So down here, there's, uh, that's the main bunk, it's probably about a, it's not a queen, it's probably a double size or what they call a full, si a full size here, uh, shelves either side, a bit of storage in the netting uh, and a nice ventilation hatch overhead, underneath quite a lot of storage um, including a 120 litre water tank, we keep all the stuff we want to keep dry down there. Um, below the water tank there is a para anchor, our storm anchor, some extra chain, a lot of the heavy stuff located low down amidships. Uh, under here is a flux gate compass for the navigation um, sim net setup. Here's a duplication of the other side of that um, intermediate beam that supports the main mast. A little bit of storage. We've got our ammeter, voltmeter combo there. Uh, there's a battery isolation switch which has been sort of re-engineered to be a uh, solar charge um, control switch. Uh, it takes the 270 watts of solar power and we can direct it to both port and starboard 
hull uh, battery banks or to either one individually. It's very handy. We use that quite a bit. Uh, companionway steps, a bit of storage behind that. Normally we have our safety harnesses hanging there. A uh, little bit of a hanging locker there. Swinging right around. There's a barometer and normally we have a clock hanging there but our clocks are in need of repair. Inside we've got uh, some shallow sliding lockers. We keep all bits and pieces, hard drives and so on. Odds and sods above the navigation area. Electrics control panel. All pretty simple. Below that, chart table light. VHF. Nice long nav desk. This isn't normally this tidy. Uh, below that, storage for the ship's books and nav gear and that sort of thing. More storage underneath. Little shelf in between. More storage here. Same thing going aft. Storage, storage. And then right aft we've got the uh, quarter berth. Which really is only a single bunk. Um, if you look down the back there, there's a suitcase, uh, a few bags, a big piece of foam, vane self-steering for the light winds, a few other bits and pieces, and right at the back a watertight bulkhead where there is a uh, circular hatch which is normally closed. Inside this area, up here we've got a 1000 watt inverter. Which is wired to the uh, 100 and, sorry, 210 amp hour battery storage on this hull and located in there is the con voltage controller for the uh, Watt and C hydro generator. Underneath the quarter berth is a battery isolation switch. Two hundred and five hour amp hour batteries, fifty amp fuses for the uh, hydrogen, solar voltage controller, bit of storage we don't use underneath. All in all, pretty neat setup, and uh, another fire extinguisher in this hull. Freshwater fill pipe for the one hundred and twenty liter tank under the main bunk. and a uh, hatch over. The foot of the bunk there's a small uh, laptop table slash writing table. It's quite a handy little gift. Uh, but most of the time when I'm doing uh, computer editing or as I sitting at her computer, uh, we tend to use this little seat here with a board for the keyboard have the uh, laptop propped up against the uh, lockers here. And more storage under the floor. Companionway stairs. At the base of the companionway stairs, another little locker. You can see we try and keep a few of the lockers empty. Um, Easy trap to fall into to fill the boat up with gear. Isn't it, honey? Huh? Easy trap to fall into, filling all the lockers up with gear. Yeah. Well, I think we do pretty well keeping it light. We do, yeah. All right, so what's happening upstairs? I'm you. <laughs> Why not? Uh, secrets. So this is the head, uh, forward of the half bulkhead that sits forward of the bowl. There's uh, storage for sails, we keep the staysail and the spinnaker up there along with fenders. And also the dinghy, we're tending to put more weight in the front of the boat. Now that we've moved the fridge out of here, uh, it's been become quite a large and handy storage spot. Again right forward you can just make out another locker. 
with a shelf over similar to a Toya's cabin. In there we keep the Jordan series drogue and uh, one or two other spare pieces of rope. Here there's a holding tank, 55 litres. It's a gravity tank, it works really well. All uh, black water is pumped from the toilet into there and depending on whether or not the sea cock, which is under this dinghy bag, is open or not, uh, controls whether it's discharged directly into the sea or left to be contained in the holding tank for discharge later. There's also one other sea cock on the opposite side of the hull underneath that uh, rope there, which is the seawater inlet for flushing the loo. Here's the loo, it's a Jabsco, it's a beauty. It's five years old now, we've only replaced one seal in it. It pumps really well, it doesn't smell, we haven't really had any problems with it at all. I'm pretty impressed by the Jabsco. Uh, there's a little shelf over the sink area, mostly taken over by Zaya's Cosmetics. Um, this is actually a good day. <laughs> Uh, there's a little port light there, again fixed port light, another fixed port light out there and one more behind that fender up forward and a uh, little sink area with a hand pump which is fresh water uh, the sink's actually ply glassed over, custom made a little bin in the countertop and then underneath here there's uh, bits and pieces, a little storage area under the sink Hand towel, companionway stairs. So I guess that just about wraps it up for a tour of below decks on both of the hulls. Now we'll move upstairs and have a look around at the deck and pod.